I want to show you how to parameterize a torus. Uh, a torus is seen here in a GeoGebra window. It is a donut shape. Uh, the way to describe a torus goes something like this. First of all, there is a central circle that goes right down the middle of that torus. And then meanwhile, you have these so-called waist curves that go around that circle at different positions. And those waist curves, you can see how they wrap around the torus here. They're kind of embedded in the torus. And at different angle positions, you get different waist curves. So all we have to do is find some way of describing the points on this pink circle. And if we could do that, then we'll basically write down all the points on the torus if we just let that theta move to different positions. Okay, so first of all, let's get rid of the torus there and think about these circles. Since we're talking about circles, here's an important preliminary fact. If you have two vectors, u1 and u2, they could be in R2, they could be in R3, it doesn't matter. If they have length 1 and they're at right angles to each other, then a linear combination of them that looks something like this, cosine of phi times u1 plus the sine of phi times u2 will give you a unit circle that is parallel to the plane spanned by u1 and u2. Uh, that's a unit circle. If you want a circle of radius r, however, maybe some radius you've chosen, little r, then you have to put r as a multiplier on both of these things. Still yet, another thing you might want to do is have that this central point is not the origin. Maybe you want to be away from the origin at a different position. And let's say the vector getting you out to that position, we'll call that p, you will have to add that on to both of these expressions. Okay, so let's remember this is the way you parameterize a circle if the center is here and it is in a plane parallel to two vectors u1 and u2. All right, so now let's think about that pink circle. The pink circle that we have here, we just have to think of it as, okay, how do I get out to the center of that? All right, that central vector looks something like this. And let's do it this way. In the picture that I have here, my green circle has radius 4, but it could be some kind of radius we'll call capital R. The green vector there is located by an angle that we'll call theta, and that moves around the green circle. And that green vector has the following components, R cosine theta comma R sine theta theta comma zero. That is the vector that gets you out to the center of that. Fine. This is the vector that we might call p as in the previous discussion. Now that we're looking at that pink circle, let's take a close-up look at that pink circle. We need two vectors like a u1 and a u2 that are unit vectors that are uh, in the plane that, that we want that circle to be in, and they should look something like this. I guess I've called them v1 and v2 in my in my application here. One of the, we'll call them color them purple, look at the v1 vector there, notice something about it's in the same direction as the green vector. It's only of length 1 though, so that should look something like this, cosine theta, sine theta, still 0 on that. That is the vector that we're going to call v1. We also need a second vector at a right angle to that. The thing that will work perfectly is the vector that points straight up. That is the vector 0, 0, 1. You might also know that as the vector we call k sometimes when we're in three dimensions. Okay, great. So I think we have our answer. To get all the vectors on this pink circle, uh, what we have to do is use the green vector to get out there. And then a linear combination that will look something like this of the two purple vectors. And that linear combination can be uh, obtained by using a second angle that we'll call phi here to move me around there. Now GeoGebra is using um, animating this with angles between negative pi and pi, but you could just as well use angles between 0 and 2 pi. Great, so we have our answer. To parameterize this uh, torus, we're going to be looking for points that look like this. P will get you out to that uh, center of the circle, and then we should add on to that a little r times the cosine of the angle that we're calling phi here, times v1 plus a little r times the angle that we're calling phi times v2 and there you go that is the parameterization for that let's write that out in terms of x y and z components now all right so the x y and z components will look something like this x is equal to well the x component of uh, this is r cosine theta great i'll write that down r cosine theta plus all right, this multiplier, r cosine phi times the x component of v1, that is this expression, cosine theta. 
plus r sine feet times v2, but that actually has a zero here, so let's skip that. We're done with the x component. The y component, very similarly, is going to be r sine theta plus little r cosine theta, excuse me, cosine phi times sine theta. Great, also with a zero in that y component. And lastly, for the z component, we're going to get nothing but little r sine phi for that. And that is the parameterization of the torus. Notice that what this does is it takes two numbers, theta and phi, and produces from those two numbers three numbers, x, y, and z. And that's exactly how you parameterize a surface. You would probably want to limit your theta values to be only one rotation around uh, the circle, the green circle there. And that would be something like this for theta. And for phi, you'd probably want to do something similar from 0 to 2 pi, you don't need to include 2 pi on there. And so the result is that with two different angles, theta and phi, we can describe different points on this torus. And there you go.